Rumors are that the Chicago Bulls want to blow it up this offseason. Could the Sixers find a way to make a trade that would compose a new trio here in Philadelphia? We'll break all of it down here on Philly Take with RB. Perfect. What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome into the show. Like always, hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of the coverage this offseason. We will keep you all up to date with the news, rumors, etc. And today we're back with a little bit of an outside-the-box idea, just a little bit of spitballing here because it was reported recently that the Chicago Bulls would like to blow it up with their core. We'll talk about that more in Uh, Whether the Sixers could find a way to make a trade that would really make a new trio here in Philadelphia, kind of an in-between idea here for this upcoming season. We'll get into all of it, but before we do, shout out to the partner of today's video, Mint Mobile. Shout out to the partner of today's video, Mint Mobile. If you out there are similar to everyone else in the world who has thought to themselves at one point, why is my wireless bill so high, then Mint Mobile is for you. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 per month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network and keep costs low because they sell directly to you online, cutting out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? You can go and use that money to treat yourself to a Sixers game or even buy a new jersey. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. They even offer super affordable family plans with as little as two lines and switching to mint is super easy thanks to their digital e-sim cards you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home and if your phone isn't e-sim compatible mint will actually ship you a new sim card free of charge the whole process will only take about 15 minutes and if you get stuck mint has a great customer service team to help you through it so if you are interested in reliable coverage and fast data for a fraction of the cost, go to mintmobile.com slash Philly Take. You can go right down to the description of this video and click the link, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. All right, let's get into it, man. So my question to the people out there is, what would you think about a trio of Maxi and B. DeRozan or Maxi and B. Levine? Now, this is what came out recently. A lot of Chicago outlets are reporting it. Number one, that Zach Levine is not expected to finish his five-year contract with the Bulls. Also, DeRozan coming into a contract year. So, you know, a lot of decisions have been made for the Bulls at one point, maybe a couple years ago. uh, They looked very promising. And then, you know, the whole freaky Lonzo ball injury and uh, really doesn't seem like Vucevic has really lived up to that contract. Uh, There's a lot going on with Chicago and they could definitely be an active team this offseason if they think they have hit their peak, which honestly, I kind of think they have. Uh, I think they you know, need to move on and, and make some changes. So I put this out a couple weeks ago, and I said, what would Sixer fans think about either one of these trios, especially with the Bulls blowing it up? It could be interesting. Are these realistic? You know, it's pretty funny, and, and as of late with Sixer fans, especially on Twitter, they have a lot of ideas. They have a lot of ambition, a lot of passion. They want to see things get righted, get corrected, but they don't have any realistic takes. They don't have anything of substance. Oh, let's do this, this, and this. Yeah, but that's not possible, you know? So I'm out here just trying to spitball a little bit and think about the direction of the team. And after everything that has been said, obviously we are waiting on the James Harden decision. That will really determine a lot. But let's say James Harden does not resign here, right? And he goes back to Houston or whatever, You know, Daryl Morey has already made it clear the Sixers are not trading in Bean. They're not trading Maxi. They're not rebuilding or anything. They're going to still try to compete. And really, that's why Nick Nurse came to this squad. That's what he said. Uh, And I put this out about a week ago. I was in Chicago and uh, a Bulls fan made a comment on my Sixers hoodie. And we were talking a little bit. And, you know, I was just starting to think about Embiid, DeRozan, Maxi. We chopped it up a little bit and he thought it was interesting. So I said, you know, I was thinking about whether those three could get the Sixers over the hump. Of course, Sixer fans went on a tirade on Twitter. They were, you know, freaking out. They were upset, this, this, and that. Again, not every idea that that these people come up with is realistic. You have to think about this team. So my question is, would this trio get them, get them over the hump? I don't know. I really don't know. But let's think about this, right? Here's DeMar DeRozan. And this upcoming year, again, he's in a contract year. He had a three-year deal. 
$28.6 million this season. Then he'll be an unrestricted free agent. If the Chicago Bulls want to make a move, the time is now. They need to go and move DeRozan, maybe move Levine, or maybe they try to you know reshape it a little bit, keep Levine. Vucevic really has not worked out, in my opinion, with that contract. And they have a couple other guys on expiring deals or with options uh, that we'll get into. And here's Zach Levine's contract for the next couple years, 40 mil, 43, 46, and then a player option for almost 49 million. Is that a good contract? I mean, I really like Zach Levine's games. I, I Obviously, I think he's more athletic. I think he could be a good fit with the Sixers, but there are questions about the defensive side of the ball. Would he fit in a Nick Nurse system? There's been questions about the personality, right? Him and Billy Donovan have butted heads in Chicago and how how's that worked out? Uh, and at the end of the day, there are just some nights where Levine just doesn't really show up like that. And this past year, DeRozan and Levine both averaged 24 points per game. But do their games really complement each other? I don't think they really do. And when you don't have that piece that can kind of, you know, mesh it all together in Lonzo Ball after that freaky injury, they need to make something happen. So I was thinking with the Philadelphia 76ers, right? Tobias Harris has to go. $40 million this upcoming year. I'm sorry. They haven't even mentioned his name in these pressers or anything. As much as I like Tobias as a guy, I just can't watch it again. Tobias has to go. You have to get some value players in here. So what if the Sixers, right, try to take this year as almost a little bit of a gap year with an experiment and then see what happens going forward to the future? Again, they are not rebuilding. They're not clearing house. They're not getting rid of everybody. So how are you going to get better? Because when you look at the free agent market this upcoming year, here's the free agents available at the small forward position as of right now. Let me ask you this. Is Chris Middleton going to move the needle? Is Kyle Kuzma going to move the needle? How about Dylan Brooks? <laughs> All right, there is not a lot of options out there. It feels like ever since that year where Al Horford and Tobias signed with the Sixers, that was the most epic free agency, but every like transcendent player got signed during that that couple night period, right? So they're all still on contracts. Like there's no top free agent. There's no Kevin Durant on the market or LeBron or whatever. And here's the power forward market, right? Jeremy Grant may be a good fit, but could the Sixers really resign him? I don't know. I, I feel like Jeremy Grant gets overpaid a lot. Draymond Green, Chris Stapps, Harrison Barnes maybe could be a nice fit. But there's just not a lot out there this year. So what if the Sixers tried to flip Tobias to the Chicago Bulls. Think about it from the Bulls standpoint. What do they want if they start to make these moves? They want young assets. They want draft capital. Well, you could take the draft capital out of consideration because the Sixers don't have any. They don't have any to trade until 2029. All right. And what else do the Chicago Bulls want? They would want cap space, kind of like the Sixers would. And if James Harden ends up leaving, obviously in the immediate term, you're not going to get as much flexibility as you'd like. But if you go and say trade Tobias Harris to the Bulls, right? Maybe they want a little bit of veteran leadership with some young pieces they may acquire. And maybe they let Tobias walk after the year. They clear a bunch of cap space. And maybe the Sixers try it with DeRozan. And if it doesn't work, then they let him walk. And they get a slot to go out and fill otherwise, right? Like James Harden and Tobias Harris, after this next season, you could be creating a lot of cap space to then have to play with around Maxi and Embiid. What would it take, though? Because obviously the Bulls are not giving up DeMar DeRozan and all-star talent for Tobias Harris. You don't have draft capital. You have to throw in young players. I'm talking about the Paul Reeds of the world, maybe the Jaden Springers of the world, maybe guys like that. It would take if the Chicago Bulls look at their roster, you know, and they want to go out here and, and maybe build a core around Io DeSumo and Pat Williams and maybe they convince Kobe White and, you know, all, all those types of guys, right? Maybe the Bulls would be nice enough to throw in an Alex Caruso, who I actually think would be a very solid player in a Nick Nurse system. I think he'd be very productive. Um, but yeah, the, the Bulls have some contracts to move on from. I think when you look at the structural fit, having Joel Embiid you know, with a guy like DeRozan, it would allow Embiid to kind of get down there more in the paint and not have to you know, try to think he has to create as much in the mid-range game. It doesn't seem like that will be Nick Nurse's M.O., uh, DeMar DeRozan is a mid-range killer. He can turn around fake and do whatever you want. And there will be games where he goes for 30 plus, right? Tobias Harris is never going for 30 plus. Look at Tyrese Maxey, right? He could really, you know, evolve into that main, uh, 
you know, playmaker, facilitator, work on those skills, and also have a couple options on each layer, right? Each level of the floor that you can consistently trust. I know it doesn't sound good. I know it doesn't feel like a modern offense, um, but maybe it would work a little bit better than having Tobias Harris make $39.5 million and sit out in the corner and spot up for three. It's just an idea. It's just spitballing. Really, it's going to determine everything based on whether James Harden resigns or not. And honestly, right now, I don't know. I mean, Nick Nurse has said he wants him back. People are debating whether he does or doesn't. Does James Harden want to go back to Houston? Who knows? Who knows? But all we do know is that Maxi needs to take a jump. He needs to take a leap. He needs more consistent volume of touches. Joel Embiid, you know, needs to improve in other areas of his game, which Nick Nurse has already talked about. And the Sixers have to get that stinking Tobias contract out of here. And if it takes one year of, you know, trying Maxi DeRozan and Bede, and then you look forward into the future and maybe you clear up two big slots that you can use to fill with other players, I wouldn't be too mad about it. I don't think I would be too mad about it. Maybe it's not realistic at all. Maybe the Bulls would laugh at this trade proposal. I just think with Zach Levine, it would be unrealistic because the Sixers would have to give up a lot of young draft capital and they would have to take a contract on for a couple years, at least of 40 plus million. And I don't think that's what they want to do right now. I think DeMar DeRozan would be the more realistic option, but you have to throw in some of these young pieces. And it really all depends on, do you think that team can finally get past the second round? Just some ideas. Give me your thoughts down below. What do you think? Would you entertain either of these trade ideas? Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And like always, I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.